And in that solitude, if you don't find a connection with Allah, then all this fake, these fake connections that you have, and I have, that are not really based in the, in the relationship with Allah, they will all disappear. They will not last. The facade will dissipate eventually. If not in this life, then in the next. I know that he is not able to project his voice that much, but if you feel you can, I'd like you to say a few words to the students. You think it'd be okay? Yeah? Okay, let's turn them around, inshallah. Down, so. I'm leaning back a little far. Okay. All right. Uh, where would you like me to start? No, no, no. Just whatever you'd like to say to the students. I don't know what to say. Uh, <laughs> thank, <laughs> thank you. Thank you all for coming here and praying. And thank you, Ustaz, for coming here and giving khutbah. And I, I'm really blessed to have all of you here. And it's it's an honor, it really is, to be here with other Muslims and to be able to pray Jummah prayer. And, and, cause really I'm, I'm the only Muslim here. So, you know, now and it's just, every, everything's always about me, about myself. And to have everybody here with me now, it's just it's really a blessing and an honor. And I'm very happy to be here, yeah. I'm very, very happy to be here. It's good to see all of your faces. Are you too nervous to recite something? Uh, I'm not too nervous to recite something. All right. Um, just, you like me to recite? What would you like me to recite? Your favorite, favorite ayah. My favorite? Let me think, okay. I don't know. All right. A'udhu billahi minash shaitan rajeem. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Lila fi Koraj, Ila fi him Rikhlata Shita, Iwa Saif, Fal Yabudur Bahadal Bay, Aladi Otamahum, Min Joyo, Wa Amahum, Min Hauf. It's a, it's a reminder for all of us that, you know, no, there are no excuses. Robert can learn Quran <laughs> from where he is. No Muslims around him. Just dedication. And That's then Allah true. The door, you know. Yeah, I like to say if you have problems, just, you know, I've never studied Arabic or anything like that in my life. You know, and I understand that there are some people, Muslims, who grew up maybe in a Muslim home. They don't even know Arabic. I mean, you know, it's not hard to learn Quran. Get on there and just try and. Don't don't give up. It's not hard. I mean, it, it starts off. You think, oh, this is the hardest thing in the world for me to do. I can't do this. But no, it's not. Just sit there and listen. You know, go along with the recitation, and then you know, eventually, what I did was I went and I learned the Arabic alphabet, and now you know, I can find out how to pronounce the words correctly. So when I'm reciting, most of the time I say it correctly. I know my accent's not very good, but <laughs> but you know, I say it anyways. And I've you know, it took me a while to learn the last ten surahs of the of the Quran, but, and still I couldn't recite them to you in order unless you're giving them to me by name, and I could go through all ten of them. And there's a few others that I've started to um, I started to learn actually in the beginning of. Ramadan, I watched the uh, khutbah speech from Ustad Numan Ali Khan, and he was saying, you know, he was saying, learn, 
learn Surat al Juma, and then go from there. And well, I, I started; it was pretty difficult, and I got through to the I got the first two ayahs done. Beautiful. And inshallah, I'll be able to get the rest of them. Sure. I just need inshallah. practice, awesome. inshallah. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. I took Shahada in, um, it was September of 2011. When I woke up from the dream that I had, I lay there and I thought to myself that, you know, I had to gather everything together and I said, you know, that was the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then I, I, I had already learned Shahada and everything, so right there in my bed, I just, without even thinking, I was just, you know, I said, you know, I was like, Ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduku wa rasuluhu And then from there Can you tell us something your story? I mean, we've heard it from Stan, so I would invite him to know you Just tell him the dream Just tell him the dream Oh, you want to know about my dream? Yes Alright, well Actually, like in, in the dream What it was, was I just, I, I was kind of Standing there, it was, it was odd because most of my dreams, my I have now since I'm paralyzed, in my dreams my legs hurt. They feel like tree trunks, and I can't move, and I'm I'm in pain because I guess I'm dreaming because I'm in pain. But this time I was just standing there, and then a little a little ar around the way from me, about I say about 20 feet or so away to my left, you know, I, I was in a desertous area. There were like sand dunes, a little. And to my left, there was a group of men gathered around a person who was standing up talking to them. And it was by firelight, because it was, it, was, it was almost nighttime, wasn't quite dark, but it was dark enough for a fire. And they had it going. And you could tell these men were listening to him intently. You know, so I was like, okay, well, this man's very important. And then also to my right was the crucifix setting up that I had had in my room, but it was, it was like life size. And I was sitting there and I'm like, okay, okay, what's going on, you know? And then suddenly the man, he was standing there and he was giving hand gestures. You could tell he was talking and saying something very important. And well, he had turned to me and he looked at me and he says, look, he pointed to the crucifix and he said, look, this was a man, a prophet, you know, he'd eat food, drink water, go to the bathroom just like every other man. He's not a god. You know, only a prophet, you know, just, you know, follow, follow God, not men. And then I woke up and then it wasn't so long after I woke up and gathered myself. Because I mean, right when he turned to me and talked to me and told me that, I knew right then and there it was the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then, I mean, I just, I woke up and then, like I said, I just, I had to gather myself to figure like, what just happened. And, and that was real, because at this time, I had been studying about Islam and everything, and I even learned the Shahada and, and other things, but I hadn't taken it yet. But then that time, I woke up and I just, right there by myself, I did it, you know? And since then, I've been, I'd say for the first year and three or four months, I was just trying to study on Memorizing Quran and 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 you know reading and that was it and never did I even think about understanding it because I never because you know as a non-Muslim reading it there's a lot of stuff in there that you don't understand and then I was searching for how to understand then I found Ustad um, Numan Ali Khan's Tafsir videos and they appealed to me very good I mean he he speaks in an American accent and. He speaks, <laughs> you know, it's, it's not only that, it's just he speaks to a younger audience, you know? And, you know, it just appealed to me. And then I noticed that as I was studying, um, you know, surahs, and then I would study it, and at the same time, I would watch his tafsir videos and understand the ayahs I was talking about and what was going on at that time when it was revealed, you know, and what was happening, and, you know, to put the... I guess to put the um, ayah with the historicity where it's going on, you know, like where, like where, when it was revealed, whether it was Mecca Surah or Madani revealed, and then it helped me just understand everything so much. And then, 
it, it made my iman even stronger, you know. And then I just, I, I knew even more how certain I was, you know. And just, and people, I even, like, someone had asked me on Twitter, like, or my cousin just said, you know, well, why do you believe in, in Muslim and all this? And he wanted a big explanation for me. And, you know, I told him, I was like, because, you know, I believe in the prophethood of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and I believe that his revelations were from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And you know, and that's what I believe in my heart and that's what I'm gonna follow. You know, and I and even if I didn't want to, you know, I I couldn't disbelieve. I I, I and I just try to remain steadfast in the salah. And of, of course everyone's mind goes up and down, but it's always there, you know? And I just have to, just always have dhikr of Allah, you know? Just always have, you know, every day as always, astaghfirullah, alhamdulillah, you know? And just, I just stay. And being in this condition that I'm in, it, it's not easy to stay satisfied and happy. I can't do anything for myself. And sometimes if I ask somebody to do something, it'll take them quite a long time. And, and I was never a very patient person, but you know, after I became Muslim and I studied more and read, I realized, you know, I have sabr now and I can wait and I can just, I can calm myself down and just remember when I, when they take it too long, I just stuck for the law, stuck for the law, stuck for the law, stuck for the law, stuck for the law. And, and eventually they come. How's the family dealing with your Islamic mother, she's she supports me in my decision. She, at first, well, I could tell you this, people. This is the first, the first, before, I, well, actually, I had I converted about for a month. And I was talking to my mom, and I didn't say anything. And I said, well, what would you say if I told you I was thinking about converting to Islam? And she's like, well, I wouldn't like it. I'm like, well, what would you say if I told you I had already converted to <laughs> and, and the, the first thing she said was, so you want to go blow up people? <laughs> and I was like, oh no, no, you have the wrong idea. And then eventually over time as I talked to her and I even gave her Quran to read and she read some, you know, and she understands me now and she supports me. And my father had a different reaction. And, you know, he, from his experience, he, he had thought that, he told me, well, son, uh, only black people are Muslims. And I was like, yeah. and, uh, and I was just and I was like I was just like dad I was like dad there's over you know one and a half billion Muslims in the world they're, they're of all races and colors and everything and then the next time I talked to him especially especially after the, the video came out and I got a lot more Muslim friends on Facebook and stuff. My dad finally sat and talked to me and he's like, it's okay, would you want to, you know, if you want to, you know, if you want to find your way to God that way, then that's your decision. You know, my sister, she doesn't approve of it very much. She likes to just, she keeps her distance. I try to talk to her about Islam and I gave her Quran, but she won't read, but, and then, I gave my son Quran and I talked to him into, he, re, he reads some, but uh, you know, he tells me I don't believe in organized religion and, and all this stuff. He's 16 years old and, and he's just, he's real, I don't know, he's, he's he, yeah, and, and he's one of the kids now these days who, they're, they're about video games and friends and being bored, you know? That's all they do, so I'm just like... I'll give you some answers, some ideas. I would appreciate, I would appreciate that. And so, but, you know, he's respectful to me. And he's still going to read the rest, and I'll talk to him. And I'll keep talking to him about Islam and everything. And then I have a Christian cousin who he's real supportful of me. And, you know, he, I told him about it, and he didn't say anything bad. And he just, he doesn't try to, you know... Well, you know, he, yeah, he pray. He, he tells me he prays for me all the time. You know? <laughs> yeah, like, and you know, and he'll even like even in my room, he'll ask me, "Can I say a prayer?" And I allow him to, 
You know, I don't want to disrespect him to be like, no. And you know, so the family's okay, actually. They're really good. And actually, I talked to my brother a lot about Islam and everything, and, and he, he liked it and everything. And I, you know, and I got, I got him to take uh, Shahada, actually. And um, actually, actually, he's the one, if you look at my Facebook page, he's the one with the thobe on, and the white thobe. He's the one, he kind of looks like me a little. He's, he's a little more chunky, though. And he's, my, he's four years younger than I am. But I look younger, of course not. <laughs> but, um, right. but I got him to take shahada, but he's, he, he doesn't practice, but I'm still going to talk to him more. And I believe I can get him to do so. Yeah, with the faith. Thank you so much. You're welcome. I know you need your rest, too. Oh, of course, yes. Can I ask you a quick question? Yes, please. Can you describe the Prophet for us? Like, describe... Can you describe how he was in the dream? Well, like I say, it was in the distance. And what I could see was... Well, he was... He, he was I would say he was about 5 foot 11-ish, maybe that tall. Because he was taller than the people he was speaking with. Because some of them were sitting down and some were standing up. And he was definitely... He had on... He had a, a, a head wrapping, like... Like, it was wrapped from, like, around his head and then down. And then like across like to one side like you know like over over his shoulder you know like up kind of high I, I could have I, I can't really my descriptive powers I'm not very articulate my descriptive powers are very lacking so I couldn't tell you exactly but when he had turned to me to talk like the the shadows from the flame the fire because you know when there's firelight it puts off shadows in every direction so when he had turned to me to talk I couldn't, I couldn't really see his face. I could see the white of his teeth, you know? And when he talked to me, it was, it was in a very calm voice. Like, he didn't yell at me like, this man is only a, a prophet, he's not a god. He just, he just you, know, you know, moved his hand towards the, the, the crucifix and said it in a very calm voice. You know, it was just like, you know, in, in a convincing voice also. And it was just like, and, and I mean, Right when he turned around, I knew exactly who it was because I don't know. I know people where everybody dreams, and when you dream, you know you know that a person's there. They don't have to announce themselves, but you just know exactly who they are. And that's when he turned, and I was like, I was just, I was like, whoa. And, and yeah, you know, you yeah. Know, only very special people get to see the prophet. So that's something yes. you know that, right? And, uh -huh. and shaitan cannot take the appearance of the prophet. So that's something. Anybody else? Okay. So, I, I, I took it to heart, and like I said, I woke up, took shahada, and then I've been. I started to learn, and I've been trying to keep my mind straight, stay steadfast, and be on the straight path. And and being in a place like this, and and being in the condition I'm in, trust me, it's it's very difficult. But I I may I do it. I stay happy. I'm not depressed. I get angry like any human would, but I, I don't get depressed. I'm happy. I, I mean, anyone who meets me could tell me, uh, you know, you're a happy person. And I'll be honest, before I, I, I converted, I, I, I was a mean person. I, I mean, I wasn't, as, I was content, but I wasn't necessarily happy. You know, I was angry towards other people. I, didn't, I treated people bad and everything. But then afterwards, I, my treatment of people, I, you know, I watch what I say, I watch my tongue, and I think about what I'm gonna say to somebody j before I say it, you know? And I remember. Because I wanna speak, yeah, because I wanna speak to people softly and with, you know, with good words. Sometimes they're not as good as I'd like them to be. Thank you so very much. Oh, you're welcome. Allah, Allah.